Hello everyone, it's Mankul Jan today. I am going to read the Essex 1693 Future Energy by Alex Raynham. Chapter 1 Energy Today. I can feel the plane shaking as it gets faster. Then suddenly it lifts into the air. Its engines are burning 1.5 liters of fuel every second as we climb into the sky above Istanbul. It is 7 o'clock on a cold February evening in a city of 30 million people below me. People are traveling home from walking cars, buses, trains, and boats. Uh, through the plane window, I can see thousands of lights from factories, street shops, houses, and ships in the, the Marmara Sea. The city lights look beautiful at night, but have you ever thought about how much energy they use? Where does all this energy come from? About two hours later, I opened the front door of my house in Adena in eastern Turkey. I can smell food cooking and hear the sound of a TV. A red light goes on and off on the telephone. All over the house, machines are taking message, washing, cooking, and hitting the house. Perhaps you are reading this book at home. Are the lights on in your room? Are you listening to music? How many machines can you see around you right now? At this moment, around the world, billions of lights, computers, TVs, and fridges are turned on. At any moment, over any day, 25 million cars are dri driving on roads, and nearly 70,000 people are flying somewhere in a plane. Most of the energy that we use for these things comes from fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas. One day soon, we'll not have any more of these fuels. Where will our energy come from in the future? And how will this change our world? <clears throat> Fossil fuels. Chapter 2. For thousands of years, people ma made things with their hands. They used the power of the wind, water, and animals to travel, move, or build things. Most people burnt wood to heat their homes and to cook. Then in October 1765, a young engineer called James Watt built a machine that changed the world, a steam engine. To make a steam engine work, a coal is burnt to heat water, and this makes steam. The steam goes into the engine and moves the parts inside it. There were steam engines before 1765, but Watt's new engine worked much better and could move big machines in factories. Soon people began to build the factories everywhere. In the next hundred years, lots of new factory machines were invented. They made new products for people to buy. Suddenly, our houses were full of new things. In many countries, thousands of people left the village and moved to the city to work in the factory. But workers worked long hours with dangerous machines. Life was very hard for them. Smoke from the burning coal filled the air in the towns. The first steam train was built in 1804. <clears throat> By 1850, trains and ships with steam engines were carrying passengers around the world. In the uh, 1880s, the first power stations were built. They burnt coal to make steam for huge machines called steam turbines. When steam turbines move, they turn parts in machines called generators, which use this movement to make electricity. Soon electricity lights appeared on the street, People had electric power at home. In 1885, German engineer Karl Benz invented the first car. It used a new type of engine and a new type of fuel, petrol. Petrol burnt inside the engine to make the parts move, and this made it much smaller than a steam engine. 20 years later, factories were producing thousands of cars every year. The new roads crossed the road, crossed the land. Most of these cars used the petrol, which comes from oil. In 1903, Old, Oldville and Wilbur Wright used a petrol engine to fly the world's first aeroplane. Things like the steam engine, electricity, and the car uh, changed the lives of everyone on us. They also changed the way that we get energy. Today, about 87% of the world's energy comes from burning coal, oil, and natural gas. 
Where do these fuels come from and how do we use them today? Coal, oil and natural gas come from things that were alive millions of years ago. Oil and natural gas come from animals that lived in the sea. Coal comes from plants that live in wet places such as land next to rivers or lakes of millions of years far under the ground. They changed into coal oil and natural gas. We call these kinds of fuel fossil fuel. And the oldest ones are about 400 million years old. Coal. We have used the coal for a long time. 2,000 years ago, the Roman people used it to heat their homes and make metals. We still use coal for these things today, but most coal is burnt in power stations to make electricity. About 40% of the world's electricity comes from coal. Everywhere, somewhere in the world, a new power station that burns coal is built to make the electricity that your fridge uses in one year. You need about 300 kilograms of coal. The biggest coal power station burnt 10 to 11, 50 million tons of coal every year. A lot of that coal comes in ships from thousands of kilometers away. In some places, we get this coal from huge holes on the surface of the earth. In other places, the coal comes from hundreds of meters under the ground. There is not much room to move and the temperature can be 40 degrees Celsius more. It is difficult to get enough clear clean air and often too noisy to speak getting the coal from under the ground is dirty dangerous work but millions of people do it every day every year about 5,000 of them die oil in places like Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, and Venezuela, well, there are lakes of oil called oil fields under the ground. To get the oil, people drill holes in the ground called oil wells. Some of these wells are several kilometers deep. In other places, huge machines called oil platforms uh, drill wells under the sea. There are Often bad storms at sea, so oil platforms have to be very strong. Under the water, some platforms are still as tall as skyscrapers, the world's tallest building. Countries with oil fields send the oil to, the, to other countries in long pipes or in huge ships called oil tankers. The world's biggest oil tankers can carry 440 million liters of oil. That is as heavy as 350,000 family cars. Oil contains many chemicals. The tankers take it to factories where it is heated and cooled to get the different chemicals from it. Some of these chemicals are used to make things like plastic or clothes. However, about 85% of the oil is made into fuels. There are different types of fuel for Engines in cars, ships, and planes. Factories also make fuel for heating buildings and for burning in power stations to make electricity. Every year we make about 60 million new cars and thousands of ships and planes. So every year we need more and more oil, natural gas. About 2,000 years ago, people in China made pipes from tall bamboo plants. They used them to drill wells and find natural gas hundreds of meters under the ground. The pipes carry the gas to their homes. They used it for gas lights and heating water. Today, we burn natural gas in factories and power stations. We also use it in homes for heating and cooking. There are even cars and buses which drive on natural gas instead of petrol. Natural gas is the cleanest fossil fuel it produces much less pollution than burning coal or oil. When a person in Britain cooks something, natural gas that they use may come from Norway, Russia, or Kazakhstan. How do they get the gas from these places? Often the gas goes through pipes. One gas pipe 
under the sea from Norway to Britain is uh, 1,200 kilometers long. In other places, the gas is cooled to make it into a liquid. This liquid gas is put in ships called the gas tankers. A lot of the world's natural gas is found inside a type of rock called the shale. In the past, it was too difficult and expensive to get the gas from inside the rock. Now, in places like Pennsylvania, in the USA, people are using water to break the shale rocks under the ground and get the gas. In the first 10 weeks of 20, 2011, 300 new gas wells were drilled in the USA. The problem is that each well produced millions of liters of polluted water. You have to clean all this water or keep it somewhere safe. It, uh, it is always the same story. Today, shale gas is the newest fossil fuel. To bring good things for some people, the jobs and money, bad things for other people, others, pollution from dirty water. In this country, fossil fuels have made it possible for most people to live a very comfortable life. Will they destroy their life one day today, one day too? Chapter three, the energy in our planet. In the waters of the Gulf of Mexico, between Mexico and the USA, there are more than 2,300 oil platforms. On, 20, on 20th April 2010, oil workers were drilling in on one platform when gas from the well exploded Oil platform was destroyed and 11 workers died. After the accident, oil started to escape from the well at the bottom of the sea. It took two months for people to close the well. In that time, nearly 800 million liters of oil went into the sea. Ugly black oil polluted beaches for hundreds of kilometers. Many birds and sea animals died. And people who worked in tourist and fishing businesses lost their jobs. As the world's population grows, we need more and more energy. To find enough coal, oil, and natural gas, people are digging and drilling deeper. Energy companies are searching for fossil fuels in places like Alaska and the Amazon, but pollution and accidents can cause great damage to these beautiful natural places. Burning fossil fuel produces dangerous gases. Some of them pollute our cities and damage people's health. Every year, about 2 million people die because of air pollution. Scientists think other gases like carbon dioxide are changing the world's climate. If a plane flies from Singapore to Los Angeles and back, its engines produce about 7 tons of CO2 for every passenger on the plane. Since the steam engine was invented, the amount of CO2 in the air has gone by 35%. CO2 catches heat from the sun, so this makes the climate warmer. Because of this, some places there is less rain than there used to be. Farmers cannot grow enough food. A forest are burning in the hot, dry weather. In other places, there is now too much rain. Terrible floods destroy farms and houses. On high mountains and in the Arctic and Antarctic, Warmer weather is heating the ice and snow and changing it to water. This means that more water is going into the sea, so the sea is getting higher. Islands around the world are starting to disappear under the sea. Cities on the coast like Shanghai, Dubai, and Venice may disappear one day too. Many living things are dying because of hotter climate. Climate is changing the places where they live, from the forests of Costa Rica. To the ice of the Arctic Ocean, the land is changing, the animals are disappearing. The facts are frightening. Every day, the world loses about 150 different types of plants or animals. At the moment, the richest countries in the world use most of the energy, produce most of the pollution. For example, the USA has only 5% of the world's population, but in any year, it uses about 25% of all the world's energy. It also produces about 45% of the world's CO2.
Australia produces more carbon pollution per person than any other country. But as other countries get richer, the population for more things, like TVs, computers, and cars, that means they are starting to use more and more energy to produce and run them. Around the world, we use about 12 billion liters of oil, 19.8 billion kilograms of coal, 10 billion cubic meters of natural gas every day. But scientists think this, that 40 or 50 years from now, there will be no more oil. About 20 years after that, we'll have no natural gas. Finally, in about 120 years, we'll finish all of the world's coal. One day, all the fossil fuels will be gone. We don't need to use fossil fuel. There are lots of other ways to produce energy. The problem is that most of the world's car engines, heating engines, and power stations are built to use fossil fuel. Changing this will take a long time, so a lot of people want to try to save energy too. The good news is that there are lots of ways to do this. The end.